Okay, so I want to cover this story because um, I feel like not enough attention has been given to this story. Uh, and this is the murder of Winston Smith. Uh, and I know, actually, Lee Camp pointed this out. And I and I, I didn't realize that this was kind of covered by... Did I? No, he mentioned that he was writing something about Winston Smith, the character from 1984, and had also seen a story about... Uh, a black guy named Winston Smith who had been murdered by the police in Minneapolis uh, on June 3rd. And uh, he pointed that out. And then I think I, I hadn't realized that I'd pulled up the story as well. Weird, unnecessary backstory uh, to, to that. <laughs> but um, it is not the 1980. It's not the narrator from 1984. Uh, a, that, that, that is not what, what I'm talking about. So I kind of want to cover this in three parts. I want to cover the uh, federal task force that did the murdering, uh, the protests that occurred after uh, said murder, and uh, why Winston Smith was targeted, um, or or why pr presumably he was targeted. Let's let's put it that way. Uh, that's probably a better and more accurate way of putting it. Anyway, so. Uh, the North Star Task Force, which I think I wrongfully called the Northern Lights Task Force in a previous live stream, so that's my bad. Uh, but the North Star Task Force, you guys might remember from the most recent Line 3 update, uh, these guys arrested. They came in unmarked and arrested a bunch of uh, Line 3 protesters, and uh, two of them like didn't receive bail. None of them got their rights read. They didn't get their phone call. And, the, and it's part of this task force, this North Star task force. And it's, again, comprised of, uh, of county and sheriff's departments. It's run by the U.S. Marshals. Uh, that, that, that was new information to me, is that they're, they're run by the U.S. Marshals. That was not something um, that uh, was... was uh, in the unicorn ride article about line three. So, so that's, th that was something that, that I discovered today. Uh, like I said, they don't have markings or badge numbers a lot of times, and they don't have any body cam requirements. Uh, in fact, they actually, they are required to have body cams, but because it's in the loophole thing and federal officers aren't required to wear body cams anyway. So implementing that for federal officers is going to take a lot of time. Uh, and that's why these guys don't have body cams. So uh, what happened with the North Star Task Force? They killed Winston Smith in a parking garage during the day while he was on a date. And he was doing a video or a live stream or something. Uh, he does he does a lot of commentary type stuff over over on the Facebook lives. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit here. But, uh, you know, this was this was uh, broad daylight. They brazenly fucking shot this dude in his own car. Uh, they claimed that he was he had a gun on him and then later said, no, well, it was in his glove compartment. We found the gun in his glove compartment before. No, no, no. After we just assumed because we're police and we're racist. So we were like, oh, black guy, he's got to be armed somewhere, perhaps in the vehicle. Uh oh, better shoot first and never ask questions. Uh, this is very similar to Philando Castile. Philando Castile also live streamed what was going on with the police. Said he was a registered gun owner, uh, reached over to the glove compartment, said, hey, there's a gun inside the glove compartment. That's not what I'm reaching for leaned over to reach and then pop, pop, pop. Cop shot him a couple times. Very similar to this, except witnesses are claiming that they heard 15 shots. Fuck! Goddamn! If it takes you 15 shots to kill someone at point blank, uh, maybe you're not fit to be a cop. Hmm. Is that not part of your training weekend <laughs> that they get for the police officers? The uh, the the Friday night training course they get, and then the fr Saturday night bingeathon, and the Sunday night fucking recovery. I assume that's what police training is, considering it takes fifteen shots to kill someone at point blank, and considering that you didn't really do any investigation on whether this person was armed or not. 
Uh, so they haven't done a press conference. And uh, they've been asked to do one. Uh, and they've also been asked to disband. People are, are like, no, fucking no. We Why? Why would we want you? You guys are crazy people. And they're not wrong. They kind of are. Uh, the marshals are claiming the reason why this was done is because, and the reason why they didn't announce themselves and didn't have badges or body cams is, uh, oh, well, they were undercover. These cops were undercover. Well, that's really weird because you don't normally like out yourself in broad daylight by murdering somebody as undercover cops. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we changed the definition of undercover as we've changed the definition of anti-Semitism, as we've changed the definition of patriotism and freedom. You know, we just changed the definition of things. Perhaps we change the definition of undercover, and it means that you randomly just shoot someone in broad daylight, which means that a bunch of people committing homicides by gunfire are just undercover, you guys. The cops that killed Breonna Taylor, were they also undercover? Because what about Philand the cops that killed Philando Castile? Was he under, under? What about the cop that killed Tamir Rice, a 12-year-old boy? Cop was undercover as as well. Is that is that what gives people carte blanche to just murder who the fuck they want? Oh, they're undercover. They can do whatever. Then they claimed that they thought he was a murder suspect. Uh, this was pointed out in the Star Tribune, uh, who left this lie up on their fucking story, uh, up on their fucking websites for a week. Uh. Which, you know, oh, we thought he was a murder suspect is just code for he fit the description. Oh, what description? Uh, what description was that? Oh, I, uh, um, uh, it's uh, we just we just have uh, 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 we just have the N word on a piece of paper. That's a, that's it. And then we kind of send that out to the to the other police people and then they go, we fit the description. The Tribune redacted the story a week later. So for a week, it was said that he was a murder suspect. Uh, so it's just kind of one thing after another for them to just randomly start saying a bunch of shit. Just one thing after another. They're just kind of caught up in their own web of bullshit. And uh, they're not, you know, there, there's some investigative force trying to um, look into this. It's been a month. Figure in a month, you would, you know, find some bullshit. No, because, of course, why would they rat out their, their cop friends? Protests uh, have been going on since June 3rd. And uh, the police have... Uh, have implemented just extreme levels of violence towards the protesters, which means that they don't actually understand what the protests are about. Uh, which is sad more than anything, I think. Um, that they just don't fucking get, like, hey, we're... Guys, we're fucking protesting police brutality. We're, pro we're protesting police violence. Oh, you are? What if we beat the shit out of you? That's the thing. Yeah, but for protesting that, we're going to do the thing that you're protesting just to show you that we don't give a fuck. Right? Like, how much more does it fucking need to be? So what do the cops do? Well, they arrested people. Go figure. They arrested a bunch of protesters. Uh, then they started towing people's cars. And they started breaking people's windows. And then they started slashing people's tires. Oh, and then there was somebody that was delivering pizza to a protester and they knocked her down and smacked her head off the pavement. You know, like the Buffalo cops did to that 85-year-old fucking anti-war protester and let them bleed out on the concrete. And when people went over to help this person, the cops come over uh, on, on their bicycles. They were also bicycle cops. Like, what the fuck? Uh, they, like, pushed them with their bicycles 
and then they pepper sprayed them. And it's like, all they're trying to do is fucking help somebody that you knocked on the fucking ground. And look, if you're, if you're going to come into the comment section with, you know, oh, he deserved it, blah, blah, blah. These protesters shouldn't be out there. Then uh, you're a bootlicking traitor. I'm not going to tolerate your dumb bootlicking racist bullshit. You can fuck right off with those comments. Dissent is American. The reason why this country exists is because of dissent. And you're going to you're going to tell me that dissenting against a, a violent fucking oppressors is wrong, you bootlicking traitor. Fuck off. Fuck all the way off. I don't have I don't have the time or the patience. Open just keep just do this. Open your eyes and fucking listen for 10 minutes. And you'll probably realize that you're wrong and a racist and need to reevaluate your fucking life. He was on drugs. He had a prior fucking arrest record. He didn't pay a parking ticket once. He may have been there was a chance. Did you see his eyes? You're a racist. Fuck off. I I am I am I just don't have the patience for it anymore. After the whole year, after the whole year of watching shit like this, you have the fucking audacity to say sh people still say shit like that. On both sides, by the way, it's not just conservatives, it's liberals making fucking justifications for cops too. Well, it's not all cops. They're they're not all Derek Chauvin. Fuck off. They might not all be Derek Chauvin's, but the ones that aren't Derek Chauvin get booted out of the force. So you see people that knock people down, watch them bleed, and then pepper spray anybody that tries to help. Fuck off. They're not here to protect and serve you. They're here to protect and serve the fucking rich. And this movement that's happening is is a movement that's set to topple the oligarchical bullshit system that we have in place now. So, you know, what's what's up with Winston Smith? Why did they go after Winston Smith? Presumably, you know, I don't know if they targeted him or not, but uh, Winston Smith was pretty politically uh radical and open uh you know talked about the teachings of martin luther king and how to defend yourself and be out on the streets and that's how they're gonna you know know what we're saying and put you know that's that's how leg he understood how it works direct action leads to legislation that's just the way it always works without direct action there is no legislation because politicians do not give a fuck about you they give a fuck about their votes and how much money corporations are going to give them based on what they say and how they legislate. So if you want them to fucking legislate on your behalf, you have to make them fucking scared of you. And that's what he talked about, because that's what you have to do. Why do you think the Wagner Act got signed? Why do you think we got an eight-hour workday? Why do you think child labor is no longer a thing? Why do you think women were given the right to vote? Why do you think the fucking the, the notion of slavery ended? Standard slavery, where, where African Americans were enslaved by plantation owners, not wage slavery. That's different. That's a that's a, a way that corporations get around being like, well, it's not technically slavery. We're giving them some kind of money, not enough to be a person or live, but something. So it's not slavery, right? All of these happen because of direct action. He talked about taking the streets back and he said, stop putting your hands up when you're at these protests and surrendering because that's not what we should do. And actually, Eleanor Goldfield just talked about this on their Sunday live stream. And, um, you know, I agree with that statement. Stop putting your hands up. I think the note, I, I think this idea of um, peaceful, nonviolent civil disobedience is. And and look, I'm I'm not advocating for violence because I don't particularly care for it. Um, but how 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 much can we the people take 
before we start defending ourselves and retaliating from an oppressive fucking force. How, how much? What's the threshold for, for acceptable fucking civil disobedience? Nonviolent civil disobedience. Because we've been trying it. How many marches did we have last year? Alone. Just last year. That was the thing the Democrats kept saying, right? Oh, well, now that Derek Chauvin is done, things are fixed. We should give the cops more money so that they can hire better police officers. Fuck off. You're wrong. It's a systemic problem. You didn't get rid of the only bad cop in the system. There's, I mean, this is proof of it. This happened a couple days after the one-year anniversary of the death of George Floyd. During the fucking trial, minutes down the street, Dante Wright is killed. Adam Toledo is killed. At the same time, the fucking George Floyd. So you're wrong. And the more they try to do that, the more we're going to see pushback on the streets. I want to play this clip because I think what this gentleman says is is important and, and it kind of more articulately expresses um, what I'm trying to say with less curse words, I think. So if you're somebody like, oh, I will, my, my. He was just so vulgar with his passionate speech about not wanting black people to be murdered in this country. Here's a black person articulating this probably better than me instead of saying, fuck off. Let us watch. Um, and as information is still coming in on that, obviously the city is going to react however they are going to react. Right now we are seeing people voicing their outrage. You see people making art on the street. You, obviously you see there's a fire there. That's nothing that we're trying to hide. Um, but the reality of the situation is that the more times the police officers keep killing people. What's going down out here, man? It's just serious. The more police officers keep killing people, the more times they, they keep taking life into their own hands. Uh, like people are done having that happen. Now, I don't know much about the situation over here. I'm just here. I just got here. Uh, but the reality of the situation is that police lethality is a continued problem, a continuous problem that is murdering people. Yeah. <laughs> the people are out here and but it does. It does not matter where you are or, or what what you do if you're fucking local news cnn or independent journalism if there's a camera and somebody's talking into it somebody is going to act a fool they're always going to say some crazy shit and they're like yeah i'm wild i'm fucking i'm on tv you know like it's just no matter what happens i found that particularly entertaining where i'm like this is unicorn riot this is an independent news media and they were still like we're gonna take our 15 minutes of pain it just cracks me up, man. It just cracks me up. They can't live in a world where they won't be allowed to survive. And if they're not allowed to survive, what else? What other kind of recourse is there? And we're seeing that right now. We're seeing that as we're not even two, three weeks removed from the anniversary of George Floyd. And again, we we're seeing another body in the streets from the people we're paying to protect us. That is not sustainable. This is no longer sustainable. And the people in charge, those in power who are hoping that we will forget about it and we'll move on into the next sexy issue. It's not happening. Your idea of waiting and see and hoping that we all move on to business as usual is not happening that doesn't happen people are done being murdered in the streets and you need to change you and need we justice done shit. We go forever kill, kill everybody. <laughs> so please it's time to be done with that all this nonsense sending black people out to fight black people all of that like it's not gonna work it is, doesn't work anymore. You have to change up your tactic. Try honesty, integrity, and just some empathy. Some just, God, 
damn empathy, please. Goddamn empathy. Joe Biden does not have that. The Democrats don't have that. The Democrats want to give more money to the cops because they have to look tough against the Republicans. It's a pissing contest. And we're the ones getting pissed on. Sorry for the gross analogy there. This is the speech that Democrats need to hear. Because when they listen to people like me uh, or or Jimmy Dore or Ron Placone or uh, any other fucking commentator from the left that talks about Nico House, that talks about police violence, like, you know, Slow News Day, fucking you name it. They get upset because we curse. Oh, they're cursing. But this articulately fucking said everything that they need to say. There's no deniability there. You need some empathy. Okay, so he said goddamn once. It's not sustainable. That's what he said. Because it's not. This is the message Democrats need to hear. We're not going to move on from this. Nobody's covering these stories anymore because because it's no longer this issue that that Democrats can go up and say, vote for me because I believe in BL. Here's a photo of me standing next to some black folks. And they got to vote for Democrat, generic Democrat one. It's not going to work. There, I think people of color across this country are done being um, tokens for votes in this in 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 your in your dumb, stupid fucking elections. Let's look at your comments. <laughs> ba 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 da 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 da. Cynical girls in the house. Zozovic's in the house. Uh, <laughs> Zozovic says cats should definitely be only only be fed hard food. It's best to give them high quality hard and soft food, and do a few days hard and a few days soft on and off. Uh, that's a good tip. We might try that uh, with Milo. We we usually do one day a week where he gets uh, soft food. Uh, so that's a that's a good tip. Thank you. Um, and don't buy pet food from China. That is a, a, a good tip. I believe the, the new food we have for him is like special for indoor people. Uh, cynical girl. Hello. Good to see you. Um, Holly says, did I say North star? Did I get the name right? Okay. Um, and Zosovic is recommending fists of the North star. Good Japanimation. Uh, and re a resounding fuck off, fuck on the fucker. <laughs> Uh, yes. Uh, Zozovic says we need legislation that allows protesters to run over the rich. <laughs> uh, rich people, if they get in the way of the protests and are disruptive to protests. <laughs> it's the, that's the mirror legislation to, to, uh, uh, Ron DeSantis's, um, uh, his his legislation where the anti riot bill he calls it where people are allowed to run over protesters if they mildly disrupt their lives. Uh, of course, no findings. Uh, where's Waltz? Uh, no, I've I haven't heard a a good goddamn thing out of Waltz, Holly. I I wish, I wish I had an answer for you. I wish I had an answer for you. Uh, but, uh, I, you know what he, you know what he's doing? I bet, uh, what he's doing right now is probably giving Enbridge more contracts to bring in more, uh, workers on that stupid fucking pipeline so that there's more, uh, um, uh, more, more people committing sexual assaults to help the economy in that region. That's what governor Waltz is doing. He's like, bring in the pipelines. Bring in more pipelines because, you know, these cops need to, uh, I mean, yes, part of their job is to kill unarmed people of color, but par another part of their job is also to protect inanimate objects that are killing the planet that uh, have uh, phallic symbolism to them uh, so that I can feel better about my penis. That's what Governor Waltz is doing. <laughs> 
Uh, Cynical Curl says, Joe's fresh out of empathy. I don't think Joe ever had any empathy to begin with for him to run out. <laughs> you know, you can only run out of things that you have, right? Like, like right now, I, I am uh, done with bullshit racist comments that reinforce negative stereotypes uh, or are just hateful for no fucking reason. I am out of uh, uh, patience for that. But that's because I had patience in prior. Joe... Joey B's big president Joey B's did not have empathy to begin with for him to run out. Uh, so uh Zosevic says profanity is only appropriate if you have enough money. Uh ain't that the motherfucking truth? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I if you're if you're if you're angry and you don't curse. Uh, that's when I'm concerned. If you're like, I'm pissed off, G. Willikers, I'm like, that guy's a serial killer. For sure. His basement is filled with dead animals. F guaranteed. He's got a blood bathtub where he drains the blood out of little animals and then he puts it in a bathtub. That guaranteed. If somebody's like, oh, I'm so mad about this, ah, oh, body whiskers, that, that guy has a wall made of skin. F guaranteed. Ending that segment on a real weird note, you guys. I'm ending the segment on a real weird note. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning into this video. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button and please make sure you share this content out. Sharing is very important. Sharing is how independent media gets the word out there about topics that corporate media doesn't even want to mention on their networks. So it's really up to you guys. Corporate media very much depends on the people. We are people powered media. That's what we really are. Uh, another great way to help if you're on stable financial ground is to uh, make a financial contribution to this channel. And you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets, early access to videos, bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content, uh, a way for you to communicate directly with me, ask me questions, and other uh, premium content that uh, will be released on a monthly basis. Um, or you can make a one-time donation as well on that same website. Um, I also have uh, various stand-up comedy albums. I have about six comedy albums out right now uh, that are available on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. And most of them, if you get them off of Bandcamp, are available for a dollar or a, a pay-what-you-want pricing. And I also want to mention that I do have an online merch store. Uh, you can go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com, click on the merch tab, and check out all of the designs that I've made myself. And the Julian Assange shirt, there is a Julian Assange shirt that's on the website. All the profit from the Julian Assange designs will be going to uh, pro-Assange activists, such as Action for Assange, uh, Kevin Gastola, Richard Methurst, folks uh, 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 that, that are covering and talking about Assange. So I'm going to be making donations to them um, uh, it'll be 100% of the profits I make off of that shirt. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Thank you again to all the people that have made contributions to the show, that regularly check out my content, that have subscribed to my channels. I, I very, very much appreciate it. And, uh, and you guys help keep this, uh, keep, keep this, this train a moving. So I, I very much appreciate that. Until the next video, we'll see you on the road. See you guys.